I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about trigonometric substitution. In problem number 25, we'd like to evaluate the integral of dx over the square root of x squared minus 81. All right. So again, we know we're going to use a trigonometric substitution, so the first thing we should ask ourselves is, what form does this trigonometric substitution have? And in this case, it has the form x squared minus a squared. x squared minus a squared tells me that I need to make the following substitution, that x is equal to a secant theta. So a in this case, this is a squared, so a squared is 81, so a is 9, and so we have 9 secant theta. So that means that dx is equal to 9 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Okay, so my x is 9 secant theta, my dx is 9 secant theta tangent theta d theta. And now we're ready to make a substitution here. So let's do it. Um, on top, I just have dx, but dx becomes 9 secant theta tangent theta d theta. And on the bottom, we have the square root of x squared. Well, this is x, so x squared would be 81 secant squared theta uh, minus 81. All right, so we have made our substitution. Now we see I have a 9 on the top. I also have an 81 as a factor on the bottom inside the square root. So when I pull that 81 outside of the square root, I get a 9. So in some sense, that 9 will come out and cancel with this 9, so I can cancel this 9 with these 81's. I'm still left with a 1 here. So let's rewrite. So this is the integral of, on top I have secant theta tangent theta d theta and on the bottom I have the square root of secant squared theta minus 1. Okay, and we know that secant squared theta minus 1 is the same as tangent squared theta. So let's rewrite. This is equal to integral of secant theta tangent theta divided by square root of tangent squared theta d theta. Now the square root of tangent squared of theta is of course tangent of theta. So this guy and this guy cancel, and I'm just left with the integral of secant theta d theta. Now I need to know the antiderivative of secant of theta. This is one that it's just helpful to know in general, that, that the antiderivative of secant of theta is ln of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. All right, so I took an antiderivative and I got the antiderivative in terms of theta, but I do not have my antiderivative in terms of x, and I'd like to have that. So what I need to do is let's use my, the information up here to help me. I know already from right here that secant of theta is equal to x divided by nine. All right, so I can use a reference triangle here. If this is my angle theta, secant of theta is what? Uh, it's one over cosine. Cosine is the adjacent over a hypotenuse, so this must be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. Uh, and then the opposite side is going to be by Pythagorean theorem, it will be x squared minus 81. And now we're ready to use our reference triangle to help us with our tangent of theta. So what this thing equals is ln 
absolute value of secant of theta, which we already know is x divided by 9, plus tangent of theta. Well, tangent of theta is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So we've got the opposite side, x squared minus 81, divided by uh, the adjacent side, which is 9, plus c. And now let me show you something quite tricky. You'll notice these have a common denominator, so I could just write this as x plus the square root all over 9. But when I have something divided by something else inside of a natural log, I could split those up. So I could write this as ln of the top. The top would be x plus the square root. So x plus the square root of x squared minus 81. Then I could say minus ln of 9. But wait a second, ln of 9 is just a constant. So why write it again when I already have a constant sitting out here? I'll just add it in with the constant and say plus c. And so this is my answer, that's right. This is my answer, that's also right. So both of these solutions are the right answer. This one looks a little bit more clean, but both are good.